Welcome to Decode ITES. This is a single learning platform for multiple IT infrastructure technologies. Do like, share and subscribe our channel to never miss out our videos. Let's continue with the learning. Let's have a small introduction of myself. My name is Prince Berg. I'm having three plus years of work experience and worked on Red Hat, VMware, Windows, Google Cloud, PowerShell, Python and Bash script. Kindly follow us on Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn and reach out to us on itesfun.com. So this lecture will make an understanding of Linux file system hierarchy. Let's continue. The next thing you need to know about is the Linux file system hierarchy. The Linux file system hierarchy also known as FHS is something that standardizes how directories on Linux are used. So standard directories can be defined in the FHS and the FHS is something that is maintained by the Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation is the organization behind Linux. All of the Linux distributions are member of Linux Foundation. And Linux Foundation works as a standardization body for the Linux distributions, like all the different Linux distributions. With the result that the directories structure that you will find on Red Hat looks a look like the directory structure you will find out on Ubuntu. For example, now in the FHS, the starting point is a root directory. So everything that exists in the Linux system exists under the root directory. And in the root directory, different devices may be integrated by using mounts. Now, before I'm going to show you some common directories that exist in the root directory. Let me explain you how the concept of mounts is used in a Linux environment. So in the Linux file system hierarchy, we have this root directory and in the root directory, you may have couple of sub directories like the boot directory, the home directory, the wire directory and all these other directories. Now, you just see a file system hierarchy without any specific devices, but the devices can be used in Linux environment by using mounts. The mount is a fundamental contact Linux and it will be used as by default. The root directory, for example, is mounted on this device like dev sda2 or whatever the name of your disk device is. Very often, the boot directory is split off and is on its own disk device like dev sda1 and the home directory might even be on a remote server like an nfs server so it will be mounted on server home and the wire directory where you get the idea may be on a different device as well maybe a dedicated hard disk like dev sdb and by using all these mounts, you can make sure that the Linux file system is very flexible because it is very easy to add a device to file system. And if you see that some specific directory is becoming too big, you just connect it to a new device and you give its own dedicated disk space. And all of that is invisible if you just use ls command while looking at the contents of the root directory. We will learn about mounts in much more detail later in this course. But for now, it's good already if you understand that all of these files are spread out of multiple devices. All right, to show you the contents of Linux file system, I am going to open a root shell for the simple reason that the root user has access to areas of system where ordinary users don't have access to. Let me start with PWD. We have seen it in this before. I end in root. And root is the root of file system. Root is a subdirectory 
of that. And this directory is the home directory of the root user. To go to another directory, I use cd for change directory. And change directory in the case can be used in two different ways. I can type cd and then let's say etc to go into the etc directory. And I can also use cd space dot dot to go back. cd dot dot is a relative directory name where means bring me up on the level. Root is child level regarding to the root directory and cd bring me up to root. I can use ls minus l. ls minus l is the long listing and this long listing is showing that some of the directories actually are pointing to something else. So, so bin is a pointer, a symbolic link where we can call it a Linux to use user bin. And lib is a symbolic link to user lib. Now I'm going, no, I'm not going to all these directories one by one, but at least I want you to have an impression of the most important directories starting with boot. So what do we find in a boot? In this directory, we find everything that is needed to boot a Linux system, which includes a very important file, vmlinuz. Yeah, this is the Linux kernel, the heart of operating system that allows you to interact with the hardware on your computer. And as you can see in here, it designates megabytes file. There's a lot of boot related information in boot as well, but kernel is the most important thing that I want you to be aware of. The next interesting directory is the etc directory. The etc directory is for configuration files. And in this directory, you find many detailed configuration files. And that is what's so nice about the etc directory. And about Linux in general, you can just read all of the configuration. Let me give you a couple of examples. cat passwd for example cat on passwd passwd is your user database so here you can see all the users that have been created to the system we'll talk much more about users as we proceed through this course cat os hyphen release another one that is interesting is cat on that had release or we can say OSLEs, which is showing you the current version of the operating system that we are using. As you can imagine, only works on Linux operating systems. Or if we are running cat that had hyphen release, it will gonna run on that had systems only. As is the center system we are using OS hyphen release. It's also a most generic version of this file and that is OSLEs, which is giving you information about the version of operating system that you are using. Now, there also we have in the root directory, we have home, which is the home for normal user home directories. In this case, we have one user only or I can say I've created another one just for a testing purpose. pgurg 
and test USR one. But if I use user add test USR two, it will gonna create a user with name test USR two. You can see that home directory for this user is created automatically. Now I'm skipping a couple of directories just to talk about USR. The USR directory or USR directory looks like program files on Windows. This is where your all binaries are and they are nicely separated between bin and sbin. Bin is for ordinary binaries. These are commands that can be used by normal users. And sbin is for system binaries. These are commands that you need to be root for. I'm currently in user bin and I'm typing cd sbin. Just name sbin without any further specification. What does this mean? That means that it is going to look for user bin as bin and that happens to be non-existing directory if you want this command to work then we better use cd space dot dot as bin what brings up one level into the user directory and from the user directory into the sbin directory and there you can see the system binaries now let's take it forward large directory i want to talk about is var var by linux is used to write dynamic data the most popular directory under this var directory or we can say the well-known directory in var is var log var log is for log files and as you can imagine in var log this is some log files that are written with the most important log file which is var log messages and look, there is a readme file as well. Now that we see, let's have a look at it. This is the explanation that is explaining that traditionally everything was locked to by lock and nowadays we have system that is taking care of logging in a different way we will talk about this as we proceed through this course for now you will have a nice impression of default directory in linux so that's all for today's lesson and we will cover up some more interesting things and continue this course from next videos thanks for watching do like, share and comment our videos. Also subscribe to our channel.